take a look at nucleophilic addition of water, hydration, and, uh, and forming alcohols, acetals. So the observed reaction here involves an aldehyde or a ketone. So let's make a note here. You can have an aldehyde or a ketone with, um, with water. Uh, and the conditions can be acidic or basic and we can form this hydrate. So you got two R groups here. Again, this is called a hydrate. Now, the equilibrium constant for this reaction, let's take a look at that. So this is an equilibrium reaction. So our KEQ for this reaction is equal to the concentration of our product, which is the hydrate divided by the concentration of your aldehyde right, or your ketone times the concentration of water. So the position of this equilibrium depends on things like the reactivity of the substrate. I mean, we know that aldehydes, for example, are more reactive than ketones are. So the mechanism of this reaction um, is written here down below. So we have here an aldehyde or a ketone, and we're going to add to that H3O plus. So these are acidic conditions um, here. So you'll see that as H3O plus written there sometimes. So the first step is we have really like this activation of our carbonyl group. So that just makes this carbon down here more prone to electrophilic attack. So we form this first intermediate, right, with a plus charge on our oxygen. Electrons come up to the oxygen, and that puts a positive charge down here on the carbon. And then once we have that, it's really like an SN1 reaction. It looks like that as far as the steps are concerned. So water attacks that carbon. That gives us our OH2 plus, And then we have a deprotonation down here at the end where we grab a hold of one of those protons. And then we're left here with our hydrate. All right, so one thing to point out, you got two OHs in this molecule, so that's not going to be a stereocenter. Now down below, it's the same general um, outcome in the sense that we form a hydrate, but the mechanism occurs under basic conditions. So under basic conditions, you have usually sodium hydroxide. That'll come over, that attacks the carbon. Lone pair comes up to the oxygen up here. All right. Now it's important to remember this is uh, an, under basic conditions. So under basic conditions, we're not going to have positive charges really on the uh, molecules. So the same thing is true, really the same concept is true when we talk about acidic conditions. You won't have negative charges on, on intermediates as you go through mechanisms. Well, last step here, we're going to come over, we grab an H, and we regenerate hydroxide, and then we form our hydrate here. Now, as we mentioned before, that, that position of our equilibrium, again, depends mainly on the reactivity or stability of the carbonyl compound. So for just a general reaction here, um, looking at an aldehyde or a ketone or whatever, just a carbonyl containing group, right? And these R1 and R2s are defined down here as different substituents um, with water, and under acidic, so under H3O plus conditions or hydroxide conditions, we, we end up forming that hydrate, right? We get that same product um, through both of those reaction conditions. So you'll notice that when we look at this trend here, so if you take something like this, this is a, a ketone. And so remember, ketones are less reactive than aldehydes. So how much hydrate do we get? at equilibrium? Almost none. Right? We're on the other end of the spectrum. If you have those R groups both as H's, then you end up having almost 100% hydrate. Right? And if you have something like acetaldehyde down here below, you're, you know, it's close to about 50-50. Now, um, when you compare this guy here 
to this row down here below, why do we get almost 100%? Well, what you've done is you've converted this electron donating group into an electron withdrawing group. So even though you have this CCH3, the electronic effects of uh, being an electron withdrawing group uh, facilitate the formation here of more of your hydrate. Now, let's talk about formation of hemiacetals and acetals. So this reaction mechanism is going to look um, almost identical to what we just saw on the previous page. Um, there's one exception, and, and that is instead of using uh, water, we'll use an alcohol here. So other than that, the mechanism looks very similar. So again, kind of looking at this, you start off here with an aldehyde or a ketone. Now this first step can occur under acidic or basic conditions. And then what we have here is a hemiacetal. So hemi just means half, right, like a hemisphere. We have half of an acetal. So this OH, OR is your hemiacetal. Now, biochem folks, we're, we're going to see this later on in chapter 23. And if you ever take biochemistry, chemistry, um, you'll end up talking about these when you talk about sugars. Now, biochemistry students, you'll end up seeing this a little bit more when you talk about sugars. And we'll talk about this in chapter 23 this semester. All right, so um, acidic or basic conditions. Note here, this only occurs under acidic conditions. So we can only form the full acetal under acidic conditions. Well, let's take a look at the mechanism here together. So let's walk through this, and I want to write this one out. So um, this is our case number one. This is going to be our acidic conditions. So let's take a look at cyclohexanone. Start off with this. And to this, let's add um, methanol. So we'll add CH3OH or MEOH. And then we're going to add H plus here. So we don't want to use H3O plus because then we'll compete with just doing hydrolysis. So the first step of this reaction is what we saw before. So we're going to come down here and grab that H. And then what that's going to do is form this protonated oxygen intermediate, the plus charge here. And of course, this has resonance. So we saw that, that problem up above. So we're going to do this. And that will give us our OH with oxygen with an extra lone pair, back to being a, a formal charge of zero, but at least with a plus charge on the carbon there. Now we're going to go through here with CH3OH, and we're going to attack that carbon. All right, so methanol is going to be your nucleophile there. So that gives us our OH, and then a CH3, OH plus. Now, uh, the next step of this reaction is we're going to clean up this molecule by getting rid of that H and giving us a neutral intermediate. So we're going to come around here, and we're going to grab that H, and we're going to do that probably with our solvent. So. Solvent comes around, grabs that H, and then those go back down there to your oxygen. So that gives us this. And here we're halfway. Here you have your, right, your hemiacetal. Right, so that's your halfway product, essentially. Now this reaction will continue, so let's just move, move down here. So let's come over and we'll do this. What we want to do is go to the full acetal, which means that we need to replace that with an OCH3. But we can't kick off hydroxide because we're under acidic conditions. So what we have to do first is we have to protonate 
that oxygen. So we're going to swing around and grab this H. That's going to give us an OH2 plus and our OCH3 here. Right. And then what we have here, and this is important, we have simply formed a good leaving group. So we're going to kick that off. And then that will give us our OCH3 plus water down here below and a plus charge right here. And of course this is this is resonance stabilized here too. So we should draw that in. So we would get this as our other resonance structure. And then at that point in time, we're going to just repeat that, that first step really. So we're just going to repeat this stuff. So what do we need? Well, we need methanol. So methanol comes over, grabs a hold of that carbon. And then, and then we have a deprotonation. So that gives us our OCH3. And then lastly, we do that, again, that deprotonation. So we come around and grab that H. And then that gives us your, your acetal. So then your final product of that is simply two O groups with R groups. And here those R groups ha happen to be CH3. All right, so just put a little box around that fellow. And then that is your full acetal. So that's our, our case number one. That's our acidic conditions. So let's take a look at our basic conditions. So basic conditions are a mechanism a little bit shorter, but what you have here is you have your oxygen with its lone pairs. So let's just clean this up and put in arrows and stuff. So reaction conditions you'll see over here like an RO minus and usually the corresponding alcohol is the solvent. So that RO minus, as we've indicated down here below with its lone pairs, is going to come over and grab that carbon of the carbonyl, and then we'll see a shift of electrons that pop it up just like so. So putting in our lone pairs, we get this. And then the last step of that reaction is that your oxygen comes over, grabs an H, and makes your um, RO minus again. So put your lone pairs back in there. And then you end up with your, uh, your hemiacetal. So note here, again, this is your hemiacetal. And the reaction stops here. So the reason why that um, doesn't continue is because if, if, let's just make a little note here, if, dot, 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 if that continued, what would it look like? Well, you'd have an RO minus, and I, I'll write it out with my highlighter, coming over here and grabbing a hold of that carbon and kicking off hydroxide. So um, that's not gonna work really well. The having hydroxide leave as a leaving group is not, um, not a favorable thing. So we'll just write here, no further reaction under under these basic conditions, okay? Now, remember before I said that these acetals and hemiacetals are gonna be seen in biochemistry? It's the sugar chemistry usually where they, uh, they show up. So in our chapter 23, if you wanna look ahead, you'll see them there. So let's look at these cyclic hemiacetals um, structures down here below and full acetals. So sugars often um, adopt these cyclic structures. 
Um, so if we look at this particular carbon right here, so that carbon is uh, an important carbon that we'll talk about later on when we get to uh, chapter 23, but that carbon has an OH group on it, and it also has an OR group on it. And so here's your OR group, and here's your OH group. And it's, it's complicated because there's lots of bonds in it, lines everywhere, but um, with that arrangement, you simply just have a hemiacetal. The free sugars often have this. So these, uh, these sugars tend to open up into open chains and close and open up, and they're in some type of an, an equilibrium. Now if we look over here, let's see if we can see what happens when we connect two sugars together. So that, that little dot right there is the same green dot that we put on the other structure. And then let's look up here. Here still is the OR group. But now down here below, remember that was an OH before, but now it's an OR group. So here we have an OR. That R is just this big sugar. And over here we have another OR. And again, that's just the connection of that other sugar. And that type of linkage that we see here is, a, is called a beta 1,4 link. Um, and when we put two sugars together in that formation, uh, you end up getting cellulose. If it's in the alpha 1,4 position, so if that, if that bond points up rather than pointing down, then you get carbohydrates. You get starch and glycogen and stuff like that, stuff that's digestible. All right, now let's take a look at acetyl hydrolysis. So remember we said that these reactions are reversible, right? So that's why we went through and did reversible arrows for that last reaction. So let's see if we can go through this together. So if we were to take this structure, right? that was the product of our last reaction. If we wanted the reaction to go in reverse, then we would put in water. So water would um, shift this equilibrium over to forming the ketone. So here you would see, like sometimes they'll write an H plus slash H2O. Of course, we all know that means H3O plus, right? So in essence, what needs to happen is this, is we need to grab one of those H's, right? And then that will form our, th our structure here with a CH3 and an H and a plus. And in essence, again, what you've done here is you've converted that into a nice leaving group. So then what happens is that's going to leave. So up here you get CH3OH right, plus that ion. And as we go through this, we'll, we'll see that same thing, right? So th there's another um, ion that has the same resonance as we've seen before. So we're going to come down here. We're going to do this. So that gives us the structure. And in essence, what we need to do is we need to get an oxygen back on there that can form a double bond. So we're going to have water come in now. So water is going to come around here. Grab a hold of that carbon. And then uh, the follow-up step on that will be a deprotonation. So we're going to put our structure in here. Here's our O, CH3. And there's your water that just got added. So then coming down below, uh, we're just going to do a deprotonation there. So water comes in, grabs one of those H's, and then we're down here. to a hemiacetal, right? It's half. So here again is your hemiacetal. 
Now this mechanism is pretty nice because we're really just going to repeat this. So we're going to go through and we're going to do another protonation with H3O+. Sometimes students wonder, well, you know, what's going to get protonated here? I, I'm going to protonate this, but why can't that get protonated? It can, and that's why this reaction is reversible, right? But we want to move in a forward direction here, so we're just going to protonate something different. So we're going to grab that H right there, made from our H3O plus in solution. That'll give us our O, H, CH3 plus with an OH right there. And I think you can probably see where we're going to go with this. All right, we're going to, we're going to kick that off as our leaving group. So we're going to boot it off of the molecule. So here you have another CH3OH right, plus um, an OH here and a positive charge there. And uh, again, this has resonance also. So we'd come around and draw the resonance. And the nice thing here is that the resonance structure of this shouldn't be a huge stretch to draw, and it conveniently leads to our final step where we do that deprotonation, right? So final step here, water coming over and grabbing that H. So that would give us our final product, which is your ketone. So you get your ketone back. Right. Now, one of the neat things that we do here, because this reaction is easily reversible, and it's done so under conditions considered to be pretty mild because you just put acid in there. It's not like you have to add you know, some very reactive reagent and heat it up to a very high temperature. So sometimes what we do is we use acetals as protecting groups in multi-step synthesis. And it's actually a pretty creative and neat thing to do. So let's take a look at the formation of cyclic acetals um, and how we use them as protecting groups in things like multi-step synthesis. All right, so let's look at an example down here below. So um, let's consider this reaction. So if, if we had this molecule, right, which is, has an aldehyde functional group to it, right, what you can do is you can add um, a, an alcohol. So one of the things that we do is we add one, two, um, ethylene diol. Also called ethylene glycol. So glycol is two sugars. So more commonly, people will call that ethylene glycol. Uh, one reason why we use a molecule, one molecule with two OHs, is that it's more entropically favored here because you don't have uh, two alcohols that you're adding separate, two separate molecules, right? And then under H plus conditions here, so we have an acid. Uh, what we end up forming here is this acetal. So we get a full acetal here. So the advantage of that is that that group is now protected from nucleophilic attack. So let's look at this reaction here down below. So let's say that our target reaction here is to take these two reactants and convert them into this structure down here below. All right over here to the right. So with, with the acetylide molecule, we can deprotonate that using KOH or NaNH2. That'll form the acetylide ion. And if we add the acetylide ion to this molecule, we're going to react it primarily right here. So it's true that there could be some reaction down here below also, right? But it's going to react up here at this carbon, right? And that's not what we want. We want that carbon yield to remain intact. So that's a problem, and then this could continue, right? So it could also react at the bromine position, right? So the key here then is to use concentrated acid, ethylene glycol, and protect that group. 
So we don't want it to react here. So we protect it. Then we add the acetylide ion down here. So we could add Na, NH2 or KOH. And then we can react it so that we get primarily an, a reaction only at the end of the molecule here. And then once that's done, we can add H3O plus, right? Remember that when we write H3O plus, it's implied that water is present, right? So H3O plus is really H plus H2O. And anyway, what that does is that gives us our carbonyl group back. So again, we protect our carbonyl, we do a nucleophilic substitution, and then we regain our carbonyl. If we don't do that, then that carbonyl position, as we outlined up above, simply just reacts. Now, we can use the fact that we know aldehydes are more reactive than ketones to do a selective acetal formation. So down here below, we have a ketone. Here we have an aldehyde. And putting um, that, those two pieces of information together, we know that the aldehyde is going to be more reactive, right? Um, now, if we add one equivalent, that means like a one-to-one -one molar ratio, then this will react at the aldehyde position first. Okay, and then we go through and we use, we use up all of that one equivalent to react at that position. Then we can add LAH to this. That'll form an O minus on a wedge and a dash. And then when we add H3O plus, we end up getting back our carbonyl group here. So we get this. Now that's a stereo center. It hasn't been designated as, as such here. So we just leave it on the line down here below.